All right, joining me now to discuss is Thane Rosenbaum, a Middle East analyst and a distinguished fellow at the NYU Law School. And joining us via Skype, Gadi Adelman, a counterterrorism expert and advisor and Middle East analyst. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Gadi, are the Palestinians intentionally ramping violent attacks ahead of the elections, in your opinion? That's exactly the reason. Thank you for having me, Michelle. That is what it is. We're going to see this go on and probably even have more such a rise or an uptick, as your reporter just said, uh, because the elections are coming. So it's not a surprise. We see this each time uh, Israel has an election. Thane, is this a tactic by uh, Hamas ahead of the elections? And, and if so, what are they hoping to accomplish by this? Well, one thing, Michelle, it certainly plays to Netanyahu's sweet spot. I mean, that was a wonderful opportunity for him to make a kind of elect pre-election speech to remind Israeli voters uh, that I'm your man because the... So the why is Hamas, if you think that it is in, to his advantage, setting this up for him? Look, you know, they've been doing this, it's almost a year. The, the, these uh, balloon attacks, the burning tires, the attempts to infiltrate Israel through the security fence, this has not changed. And in fact, we're starting to see night raids as well apart from the Friday uh, uh, protests. Uh, they do this because this is how they galvanize their people. Uh, remember, they have been uh, subject to severe infrastructure and economic deterioration. Uh, they're strapped cashed. Uh, because of Hamas's handling of, of the Gaza Strip. Absolutely, yes, but yes, to be clear, but th again, they're pointing out that, you know, Israel is preventing Qatar from giving them cash and also preventing electricity uh, to be sent to uh, Gazans. And so there, 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 is, there is an advantage for them uh, to play the Israeli election card by saying, you know, we will continue this regardless of who is victor, becomes the prime minister, and we're going to continue to remind uh, the Palestinian people, uh, since the West Bank has no leadership at all, that the only leadership that exists in the Palestinian people is in Gaza. And, and that's the message that Hamas is trying to get across with this. Um, Gadi Netanyahu sending the message uh, to Hamas today that the terrorist group really needs to watch out because his uh, retaliation, his retaliation from the Israeli Defense Forces is going to be double or quadruple whatever Hamas sends. Is this to his political advantage or does a more aggressive approach into Gaza perhaps create uh, more unpredictability for him? No, it's, it's obviously because you have the election uh, that is so close right now, he needs to show that he's he's got an iron fist. He needs to show the people living in the Gaza envelope in southern Israel that he's going to take a strong hand at this. But we need to understand what, what the guest just said there uh, about Hamas saying that Israel is not allowing the Qatari funds in. The last time there was a ceasefire and the last time Hamas promised Israel that they would stop what started on March 30th this march of return, this violence every Friday that we see at the fence, was if Israel allowed these funds to come in from Qatar, which they did. And it did not stop. It slowed down a little, but it never stopped. Now they're saying, well, you're not letting the funds in. The last time Israel tried to give them the funds, Hamas refused those funds. So this is a big political game on Hamas's end. From a political uh, perspective, Thane, uh, how else would an Israeli leader respond to this? I mean, we say balloon bombs, and, and the name sounds pretty innocuous, that and fire kites, but these are explosives that essentially go over the Gaza border into Israel. They've created uh, millions of dollars worth of damage. Thankfully, there haven't been any physical injuries, but certainly not for lack of trying. Some of these have actually landed in kindergartens. So you say that um, Netanyahu res responds by upping the ante as a political measure, but what would be a reasonable response from anybody else? What would a Gantz response be? Well, you're quite right about the destruction. I mean, the hundreds of acres of nature reserves, forestry, uh, farmland. farmland, right? This is not a small uh, injury to the Israeli people. This is significant. Uh, but remember, the timing is also interesting here because it was, in fact, today that the blue and white party announced a, an agenda, and one aspect of the agenda was to separate from the Palestinians. And that is significant because this is exactly playing into Netanyahu's hands because he's been saying that this is a far left-wing party and they're going to destroy our economy and they're going to lead us to a Palestinian state. Uh, the answer to your question is, look, Israeli, no matter who's been in power 
throughout its existence, they always had to have a strong hand in protecting the homeland of the border. So I'm not sure Gans would have done anything differently because how else are you supposed to defend a country from a people that are seeking to infiltrate it through various means, from uh, incendiary kites and balloons and fires and uh, burning tires and, and mortar. And rocket launchers. And rocket so, launchers. All right. Uh, Thane and Gadi, don't go anywhere. We want to talk a little bit more about uh, internal Israeli politics as uh, the elections get closer and closer. And Israel's uh, elections committee barring two Arab Israeli parties from running in next month's election. The committee also voted to disqualify Ofer Kassif, a Jewish member of the other Arab Israeli party, Hadash Ta'al. Now, the ruling causing an uproar among Israel's Arab minority. The Supreme Court will have the final say on both of those decisions. Our senior Middle East correspondent Mohammed Al Qasim has more. The Israeli Central Election Committee has ruled one of the country's two main Arab parties will be barred from taking part in the April 9 elections. Balad, a Palestinian nationalist party which teamed up with the Islamic Ram Party in the upcoming elections, is accused of seeking to eliminate Israel as a Jewish state and supporting violent Palestinian attacks as well as the Hezbollah terror group, accusations vehemently rejected by Israeli Arab politicians. It's a political decision to delegitimize the Palestinian minority and the democratic Jewish voices in this country. Baled party leader Jamal Zahalqa said the decision to disqualify the slate sends a hostile message to the Arab public in the country, adding that this slate won't be deterred. The list's candidacy has been challenged by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's right-wing Likud party. Netanyahu took to Twitter to welcome the decision, saying, those who support terror will not be in the Israeli Knesset. The decision comes despite an opposition by Israel's Attorney General, Afichai Mandelblatt, who ruled the petition was not supported by enough evidence. The head of the Legal Center for Arab Minority Rights in Israel, Hassan Jabbarin, said the ruling is a form of discrimination. The impact of the disqualification decision of the Electoral Committee of Israel is always come against the Arabs. This became a stage for incitement against Arab uh, member of the Knesset. The same committee that voted in favor of disqualifying the Arab Alliance approved Jewish candidates from an extreme right party many view as racist. Arab nationalist party Balad is fiercely critical of Israeli policies, particularly the occupation of Palestinian territory, and calls for a secular state not based on religion. And Balad candidate Hiba Yezbek promised to fight the ruling all the way. They are actually banning uh, the Arab to choose by themselves their, uh, their representatives and their leaders. We, uh, we of course, uh, uh, will go to the uh, high court and we uh, will continue until the end and we will not accept this discrimination against us and against the Arab uh, people in Israel. This isn't the first time the Central Election Committee disqualifies Balad. Israel's Supreme Court will now have the final say on the decision. The same court that has overturned all previous decisions against the party. Hamad Al-Qasim, I-24 News. And we're back with Middle East analyst Thane Rosenblum and counterterrorism expert Gadi Adelman. Thane, uh, Balad Ram, the Arab-Israeli party, it states quite clearly that it seeks to eliminate Israel as a Jewish state. Is it undemocratic to ban a party that seeks to destroy the country that it wants to govern? It's a great question. You know, the optics look bad, right? D disqualifying parties in a liberal democracy that respects the rule of law. On the other hand, as you correctly point out, the party itself believes in the dismantling of the state. Uh, what, was it, what would it be like in the United States if there was a third party that said there should not be United States of America? We should merge with Canada and Mexico and have one national state that has no connection to the old American colonies. Nobody would accept that. So Netanyahu uh, has been saying, look, you know, they believe in terror. They believe in a, a one-state solution in which Jews will not have a majority and there will not be a Jewish state. Uh, but at the same time, Israel has this moral position around the world as being a liberal democracy. The optics look bad, but it might be the right result. The bigger problem is the hypocrisy that, unfortunately, Netanyahu, because the Knesset is a parliamentary system and you have to buy votes from every direction, there are unsavory elements on the Israeli national right. 
and at least one of the parties looks like a racist party, anti-Muslim party. Uh, and so he's, he's joined up with that party at the same time he's applauding the disqualification of Arab party. Uh, Gadi, uh, very quickly, is there hypocrisy? Can we equate the Otsma Yehudit, which has been accused of being racist, uh, being allowed to run, and this Arab-Israeli party, which seeks to destroy Israel from not being allowed to run? You've got 30 seconds, Gadi. I, I don't think that it's hypocrisy at all, and Thane is absolutely right. I would take it a step further and say it would be like in America, instead of a party wanting to uh, get rid of America and join, as he said, Canada, it would be like someone in America having a party that is siding with terrorists that are operating within America. So, yeah, I don't, I don't see the hypocrisy there. It's two totally different things. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Great discussion, Thane Rosenbaum and Gadi Adelman. Appreciate it as always.